This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with Mackenzie Jim Marbella. We're in sunny Covent Garden today. All the Beautiful. Way, all the way back from Boston after uh, an epic night for British boxing. And the new. And the new. Not that mean. All right. Man. Rate them in order. Well then. Gil. Gil. Porter. Giraffe. Just for emotion, what, you know. Well, it was a bit different because no one was allowed in the ring on Saturday, which was a bit weird. Like, yeah, everyone was looking for you after. Yeah, I know. So, but um, the Gales win was right up there because the Real's such an elite fighter. And it was a bit like Brooke as well. And, and Barker's win, Gill wasn't a yank. It's very difficult. All fantastic. I mean, you know, the emotion in the change room after with James DeGale and Jim McDonald. You know, the family. Just a brilliant night. Brilliant night. And, you know, winning it over there gives him so much more respect and so much more props than winning it over here. And um, it's massive for his career. Massive. And now we've got to big, give him a big homecoming, October, in London. And the future is bright. The future is chunky, as he said. Got to tell a funny story. It's so funny. Now I've built it up, you probably won't find it funny. But So we're in the changing room, right? Picture the scene. All of a sudden, Sugar Ray Leonard walks in, right? James is like, oh, Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray. So he says, um, Sugar Ray comes over and says, man, from one Olympic gold medalist to another tonight, you can make history. James is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sugar Ray goes, you know, when I was younger and I was fighting, he said, I used to look in the mirror. I used to see greatness. I used to tell myself, I can see Muhammad Ali. I can see Sugar Ray Robinson. James is going, yeah. He said, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? James goes, I see James Chunky DeGale. <laughs> it was so funny. Sugar Ray went, good luck, and walked out. But it was a, it was a brilliant week, brilliant week. And uh, a new world champion in the, in the 168 pound division. Massive for British boxing. When would his mandatory be due? Um, because it was a vacant belt, um, they'll call it in about six months. So he can fight anyone he wants next. Um, and then after that, he'll probably have to fight his mandatory, probably in February or March next year. Hmm. Is there a possibility, depending on what happens on 20th of June, that... 20th of June, what's that? Oakland. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that a possibility, Paul Smith and Undergal, at any point? If Paul Smith beats Andre Ward, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, he obviously, no, no. I think, obviously, he's, he's fought him before. Um, no, I mean... James wants the big fight. James will fight anyone. So, you know, I, like, I love the Andre Ward fight. I love the Golovkin fight. I love the Mikhail Kessler fight. Um, Andre Durrell's been on for the rematch. It's not a fight that's going to happen next. Um, Anthony Durrell wants the fight. Lucien Boutte probably wants the fight as well. It's, you know, he's in a great position. And some Brits as well, you know, obviously not just now, but Callum Smith, Rocky Fielding. George Groves, hopefully. Is that the, is that the biggest up. money fight available to Jones? What, George Groves? Mm. Yeah, of course, massive. You know, if Groves can win the WBC in September, Wembley next year, I mean, that's bigger than Frotch Groves too. You hope. No, what, I know. Did, you, did you say I hope? Yeah. No, I know. Come on, Coogan, oh. you know the market. No, You're I'm not as stupid as you look. No, I know, but Frotch Groves too was kind of a fluke, wasn't it? No. It was a fluke. It was, it was a little great bit of a fight. Fluke. It was, but the circumstances <laughs> and events that led into the second fight was in your favour. Yeah, but it, it, but I'm know. just saying, but it's hard to recapture that sometimes, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Not with Frotch Groves too. Not with Groves the Gale too. Two belts, you know, the first fight, the animosity, it's massive, massive fight. Well, did you speak to Carl Frotch uh, since? Yeah, I spoke to him on the phone. What did he think about it? He thought it was a good fight. He, said he, on the sky. he said he thought that the guy was brilliant at the start. He said he thought that he was not as good in the second half. You know, almost gave it away, but he knows how good Andre Durrell is. Durrell was a brilliant fight, and you saw that the way he come back into the fight. So he gives him massive props, and some the gal grow, uh, the gal frotch. Is a did big he fight. give you any indications? Of he, he, I think he, he might I want think he's going to fight again. I think eyes? he fights Golovkin if he fights again. He's sort of he's talking a lot about that fight. And um, so are we, so are HBO. It's a massive fight, you know. But again, I, I, I can't guarantee he's going to fight again. But if he does, I think it'll be Golovkin. 
you're right. That's good to hear. No, I'm going a bit no, no, in the legs over that fight. Here, I've read, you know, I've been reading I can't say it. it's going to happen, no, but no. he's up for it. He, you know, and it's. I think it's like. You know, we talked about what is going to get Carl Froch back in the ring, and I think the answer is his competitive nature. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't. The money's. Of course, it's got to be the right deal, but it's not a motivator. The legacy, it's kind of got it. I think it's that. It's the goading. Do you know what I mean? Go on, Froch. Go on. I think you're hard, son. That's, I know that's like, as, as playground as that is. Do you know what I mean? That's the kind of thing that can just flicky switch. You know all the Kawasaki stuff at the weekend? Mm. I think that's like... Mm. I sent him a text going, does the fire still burn? And he just sent one back with fire, you know, the fire emoji, like loads of them. And the answer obviously is yes. And um, I just think the whole DeGale thing, you know, the, the Golovkin, the Kawasaki, I just think it's wound him up a little bit. Good. Good. And, um, but I think, I love, listen, Froch Golovkin. What, mate? Absolutely. Anyway, we've got a little show going just on. Just a little tiddler. little show. Um, was with Kel Brook yesterday. Um, looks well. Looks well. Mm. Um, spoke to Dominic Ingle. Um, you know, adamant that you can't be overlooking Frankie Gavin, no, despite not. what people say. Listen, people step up to the plate when quality fighters can step up to the plate when it's their time. Frankie Gavin is a quality fighter. I was speaking to James DeGo about it. He said, mate, on his day, Gavin will beat Brooke. That's what James DeGo said. Really? But they don't know whether he can perform at that level. They've seen it before. They grew up with him. They know what he's capable of. But producing it on that level is a different feel. Brooke's confidence at the moment is absolutely through the roof. I don't know whether that will work to his benefit or not. But he, as he said, he's on a seek and destroy mission. He wants to go in there and bowl Gavin out in three rounds. Gavin's no mug, skillful. Seen him, you know, you've seen his workouts, you've seen his mindset, he's well up for this fight. So um, he's certainly not taking that for granted, that fight. We're at the workouts here today, uh, obviously Anthony Joshua, labelled a hype job or a me hi media yeah, hype job right, yeah. by Johnson. Jo uh, Johnson's, I'm trying to get my head around what Johnson's doing here because he doesn't want anyone to know where he's training. He's been in the UK for four weeks. He doesn't want anyone to know where he's training. He looks very well, he sounds very confident. And I actually said to him, when I saw him last time, I you know after they got in the ring in Birmingham, I went, Kev, great job, mate, building the fight. He went, I ain't messing. Uh, and we were just in a bar and I went, yeah, good one, mate. He said, I'm telling you, I ain't messing. So I don't know whether someone's uh, put him on some kind of incentive to beat Joshua or something which I wouldn't put it past people, but he, he's game, he's up for this fight. And um, he just rattled Anthony a little bit. I think the press conference tomorrow is gonna to be particularly interesting because I think he's gonna try and get under his skin. And um, he's not really had that before, has he? No, that's good for, good for Joshua. Listen, I, I can't see anything but the fight going deep. You know, especially if Johnson's up for it and with his experience, I think he's gonna take Joshua some rounds. Joshua's just got to keep his emotions in check. He wants to punish Anthony Josh, uh, Kevin Johnson. He wants to hurt him. You can't always go in there with that mentality, but he's looking phenomenal in the gym and he, he's ready for the Kevin Johnson fight. I think it's the perfect fight. Who's got the tougher task from Gradovich and Linares? Do you know what? Um, when I was in America, I was speaking to a lot of people, Lou DiBella, um, you know, the guys from Top Rank, the guys from Warrior Boxing, some guys from Al Heyman. And I was talking to him about the show. This show is... Everyone's talking about it. And um, they said to me, can Kevin Mitchell punch? And I said, yeah, he can punch. I said, then I think he'll knock Linares out. And then I said, uh, they said, oh, well, what do you think about Selby Gradovich? And they said, no, Gradovich will win that fight. I said, he's too strong, he's relentless, pressure fighter, just does not stop for 12 rounds. And I think the perception over here is that Selby's got the easier fight. Um, Gradovich, is, this is his fifth defense of the IBF world title. He's just been named fighter of the year by the IBF. He certainly hasn't come here just to give up his title. Selby's shown unbelievable promise, but not at that, you know, he hasn't been at that level. Mitchell Linares, for me, is just one of the best fights I've ever made. I mean, Linares, three-weight world champion. Kevin Mitchell, you know, the, the fighting pride of East London. Everyone loves Kevin Mitchell. The, the re reaction and, and the reception he gets on Saturday is gonna be second to none, but he has to execute it on the night. He looks brilliant, he's trained so hard. He was fantastic against Ostrada, but Linares is in another league to Estrada. Um, I 
think that fight, that's going to be one where you're going to see just an epic trade up and someone's getting knocked out because they can both bang. And uh, I'll tell you what, if Kevin Mitchell could win the world title on Saturday, people talk about Bigail, people talk about Brooke, people talk about uh, Barker. If Kevin Mitch Mitchell can win the world title at the O2 in front of his people, mate, that'll be right up there. And Anares has cost me an absolute fortune, so I hope he does it enough. Um, right, I'll put you on the spot now. On Saturday night, will we have three or two new world champions from Britain? Um, I think... You know, because you don't know what's going to happen in, in uh, Selby and, and uh, Mitchell, you'd have to go with two. You might go with none. You, you've got three of those Brits are fighting world champions. So, you know, I think I, I've, I haven't really looked at the odds too much, but I think Mitchell's even money. I think Selby's a slight favourite, but you can't call the Mitchell an RS fight. You just you can't call it Selby. I think on paper and it, stylistically, I think you can, but. You know, you saw against Simeon when Selby fought him in Hull. He was a relentless pressure fighter. And he caused Selby problems. Well, Gradovich is on another level to Simeon. So how is Selby going to keep him off for 12 rounds? He's got to hit him very, very hard. Because this Mexican-Russian is half a lunatic. Um, but, you know, all three world title fights are absolutely fascinating. Johnson against Joshua is fascinating. And people aren't even talking about the two British title fights and the Commonwealth title fight. Ryder Blackwell could be fight of the year. You know, John Wayne Hibbert against Dave Ryan for the Commonwealth, mm. that was a fight of the year contender when they first fought. Cardle against Evans, two undefeated lightweights fighting for the British title. So, you know, this card is, I said it at the start, it's the best card, I think, since the Full Monty card. What was that, 16 years ago? 14 years ago? I'm going to sit there from 5pm and watch every single fight unfold and everyone's going to be an absolute cracker. Just going back to uh, the gal, is there any chance that you may combine him and Joshua for the September Maybe, October? maybe. I mean, I think um, you know, we've got Brooke in a big fight if he beats Gavin on August the 29th. And if he doesn't, Gavin will be in that fight. So you know you've got a big show at the end of August. Then originally the plan for Joshua is September the 12th. The gal is potentially October the 17th in London. Um, but you know, a lot's going to happen. We have to look at the right opponent. And uh, they might end up being combined, you never know. All right. When did you get back? Yesterday. Oh. Thought you might have just gone straight to the work. No, now. I didn't get out of Heathrow till like half 11, oh. 12 o'clock, so I wouldn't have got up there till 3 o'clock, so I had to let you do your thing. That's fine, that's fine. All right, well, listen, Eddie Earn, unless you've got anything else to add. No, just um, a big thank you to the support for James DeGale last weekend. One of the most pleasing things was that people got to see the real James DeGale. Now, I've said in interviews before, when I first saw him on TV, and I saw him in the build-up to the George Groves fight, I didn't really like him, to be honest with you. I didn't think he'd come across well at all. But I've got to know James DeGale, and I think the public have got to know James DeGale over the last year. He's a top man. He he's lives and breathes the sport, and he, he's chased his dream and he's done it, and now all of a sudden he's getting the praise and respect he deserves, so thank you to all the support you've shown James to go. Get behind this show on Saturday night. You know, four Brits in world title fights, Andy Joshua against Joshua, two, uh, Johnson, two British title fights, Commonwealth title fights, the best card of British boxing seen, certainly over a decade. And uh, get your popcorn, sit there, enjoy it, and support British boxing. Nathan Cleverly and Lucian Reed making his debut as well on that yeah, show as well. they're not fighting each other. No. Eddie Earn, thanks to all to IFL TV and uh, we look forward to the workouts. Have a look what these uh, other lot have got. Thank you.